Our next session is called Being Part of the Travel Better Club. Jeff Bolin from Sustainable Travel International will be talking more about this and divulging information about the new Travel Better Club. Learn how easy it is to start making better decisions when traveling and how to increase your positive impact on the world. Jeff Bolin leads Sustainable Travel International's global efforts, partnering with governments, companies, NGOs, and communities to combat threats such as environmental degradation, overconsumption, and economic inequality. Jeff joined Sustainable Travel International in January 2016 as the organization's chief operating officer. His background includes more than 25 years of management, business development, and strategic planning on a global scale in both the nonprofit and private sectors. He speaks Spanish, French, and Portuguese. Okay, uh, well, Jeff, it is wonderful to have you here at the summit. Um, I'm so excited to, to learn more about Sustainable Travel International and um, some of your travel experiences and how uh, viewers can learn how to make better travel decisions and, and have better experiences. Great to be here. Thanks, Claire. Excellent. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's jump right in. Um, I would first like to know how you define sustainable travel, um, that term. Yeah, that's a that's one of those fun questions. It, uh, I, when I've been asked that in the past, I, I, I somewhat differ only in the sense of I think, you, you know, you really got to focus in on the question of what sustainable means. And, and besides the fact that it's an unfortunate, like many other things, it's an unfortunate buzzword. Um, I think what is important in, in the discussion is this notion of of how do you either, um, you know, in some ways try and make sure that the experience that you are able to have now is the same kind of experience that people are able to have in the future. And that can apply to, gosh, that can apply to anything. That can apply to, to, to seafood or, 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 or cocoa. That can apply to, um, you know, to, to hiking and backpacking any kind of thing so i think this you know this i'd like to say it's sort of sustainable is is really about this uh things in an equal state or similar state for you know for generations to come now when it i, I think that the more important um the more important outcome than than sort of the same state is uh, even a better state right that's a that's that's much more interesting to me which is knowing that in our case tourism has had you know, positive and negative impacts um, that where where it's had negative impacts, you're able to to sort of turn back the clock, so to speak, and realize if we stop doing some of the bad, we'll get back to some of the good. And that can be in things like um, you know waste, right? We've all seen plastic water bottles and whatnot. That can be in areas like um, protecting reefs or people 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 um, engaging with wildlife. So I think if you know a changing of the rules leads to something that's it's probably better than than the typical destination of sustainable and goes on to some of the improving the conditions in tourism uh, wh or when you apply the kind of the screen of tourism uh, the, you know i think the, there's a lot of logical logical conclusions that logical ideas come to mind which is again it's about you know that that kind of experience um i can tell you that machu picchu today is not the same in machu picchu that i went to i guess for the first time 15 or, or 20 years ago however many years it was um yeah, you know, is that sustainable? Well, it doesn't seem to me because you're you're challenging waste and water and, and capacity issues over time. So when you talk about sustainable tourism, it really is that things like carrying capacity and waste and monitoring and management and effect on locals and effect on local revenues and effect on natural resources. So it's it, it just gets to be a specific deep dive when it is about that, you know, the people and the place. Absolutely. Okay. So you know, when we when we talk about these um, effects that tourism has on a location, um, you know, things things get very broad very quickly. I feel sometimes, and uh, and so it's hard for one viewer, one traveler, to understand the impact that they have individually. Yeah. Um, and so I would like to kind of dive more deeply into that, and and what what can one person do um, to really cause like a, a positive ripple effect. <laughs> With the decisions yeah. that they make, yeah, it's 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 hard. You know, um, if you're if you're the ministry of tourism in an area, or the largest tour operator, largest hotel, for example, you can say, 
you know, if you're, if you're the largest hotel, you can say tomorrow, we're no longer using plastic water bottles, only reusable. Mm-hmm. Right? You can do that, and your effect can be significant. If you're the if you're, you know, you flip it over and you say, I'm the traveler that's just gone to Nicaragua or to El Salvador or to, to, to Spain or wherever it might be, you know, you're really one dot or one one needle in a gigantic haystack. Mm-hmm. I think, firstly, you know, the, the 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 there's the myself, right? Making good choices. Um, uh, about myself, so understanding what the issues are, and making choices. So, yeah, things basically things like like um, a reusable water bottle, right? Is that a good choice? Yeah, it's a much better choice than using the plastic water bottles. Choices on uh, transportation and uh, on how you get to a place. Choices on where you stay and the where you spend your money. Are you spending money on? Um, and some of this is hard to know, but are you spending money on on maybe an international chain versus a local establishment? You know, that helps you figure out or think about how much money is staying locally. More empowered locals means, generally speaking, turns into better management of resources. Um, so I think there are the things around and about yourself. If you're flying from from the, from the U.S. or for, from wherever to Europe or to South America or to Asia, are you offsetting the carbon footprint? Right. That's that's significant. You can do that. Are you going to do that? So you have, I think you have the, my own actions and we have that every day with all the things we do. I think the more interesting question is how do you multiply that effect, right? So you get your, get that, your own house in order, but then how do you multiply that effect? Are you sharing those ideals with your fellow travelers? Are you sharing that feedback with businesses, right? Place the lodging establishment you stay. If you stay there and say, well, why do you guys have plastic water bottles? Couldn't you have large ones that we refill, right? Um, have you thought about uh, having, you know, liquid soap containers versus little disposable bars of soap? There's a whole range of things where you can not only take your own action, but then you can you can start pushing it beyond your circle, and that's when scale becomes interesting. You can ask a large hotel chain or send a note to a large hotel saying, "Why do you do X, Y, and Z?" They pay attention to that. Believe me, they pay attention to that. So I think I think it's, it starts with a, you know, taking your own actions about your own self and educating yourself, and then b, how do you broaden that impact? And it doesn't mean anybody has to jump out of a, on a on a soapbox, but it can be, a, you know, are your fellow fellow travelers, the people you're traveling with, doing the same as you? Do they offset their trip? Are they using reusable water bottles? Um, have you asked the the businesses you're engaged in about how many business how many locals are employed? Do they have uh, policies when it comes to, to to water and to waste? Do they have policies when it comes to uh, you know the the reef that's out in front of the hotel that maybe you want to go diving? Is there is there something in place because they these businesses are catering to consumers? So I think that's you know that's sort of the you know the, yourself and one level beyond that and and I think the important thing is the one level beyond that doesn't mean you have to be the loudest voice. It just means you have to ask some questions. Excellent, wonderful. Um, and that's all really, really good advice, uh, especially, um, you know, so many viewers, so many travelers want to know what they can do in the moment when they're there um, to make sure that their impact is minimal. Um, and you mentioned carbon offsets. I would like to take a minute and talk a little bit more about that. Um, I know there's there's several different ways to do carbon offsetting and um, there are several different conversations about that and, and how helpful it is. Uh, but could you explain a little bit more about what that means and, and some ways to do it? Yeah, kind of a could be a bit of a catchy term and it's kind of come in and out of vogue. Mm-hmm. Um, when uh, in most activities uh, one undertakes have uh, uses some um, fossil fuels. And so in the case of travel, and we just focus in on air for a moment, when you fly from point A to point B, you are um, that jet, that plane, burns fuel to get there so that's that's the consumption of carbon or a, of a uh, a fossil fuel and it's a release of carbon dioxide uh into the atmosphere uh and other some other you know, other chemicals as well um the notion of a carbon offset is to say that not only is there a, a financial straightforward financial cost to for example air travel which is you buy a ticket and cost x and you take your trip but there's also in reality there's an environmental cost um that fuel was created Carbon, mono- carbon dioxide and other gases were released. Um, to, um, to the best way to think about the offset is how do you get that? How do, how do you do something to compensate for that, that release of chemicals? Um, and so there are markets around the globe that, that deal with carbon projects, carbon offset projects. So these are projects 
that range from things like forestation and tree planting to uh, uh, to biodigesters to other alternative sources of energy um, and fuel. That in effect you are you get the you support these projects and help these projects become financially viable and to, to get off the ground and become financially viable, such that in the future energy can be created in a uh, uh, an environmentally friendly way, environmentally sensitive way. And at the same time, in some of those projects, what it does is actually reduce carbon dioxide and the other the emissions. So uh, we understand that that trees absorb uh, absorb CO2, mm -hmm. and so the the more we have standing forests and the more forests that are standing, ostensibly the more carbon one CO2 one can take out of the air. So um, yeah, on one side you're essentially causing impact, on the other side you're essentially purchasing uh, 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 an offsetter or the um, investing in a project that has the inverse or the op uh, the um, the opposite uh, of the negative impact. Okay, great. Um, and so even if travelers would want to like go home and, and plant a few trees <laughs> um, just to just to kind of help that offset there. Um, but uh, you're saying like investing, investing a certain amount of money, figuring out how how much um, your impact actually costs from that flight is 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 beneficial and is helping. Absolutely. I mean, we do that with a, we've done that for years and we've done that with a lot of businesses, companies like Natural Habitat Adventures and and um, and United Airlines and, and any number of others have formalized programs that either allow the traveler to purchase an offset in association with their trip, um, whether it's air or, or air and ground, um, uh, gives them the option to do that and or some companies just incorporate that into the pricing. So it's a recognized cost, it's a recognized environmental cost that's offset by the purchase and sale of an offset uh, that goes to, and that, that funding goes to different projects around the globe. Those projects, as I say, range from, from planting trees to biodigesters to the use of, of cook stoves that have a lessened impact to wind farms. Um, uh, I'd certainly recommend, I mean, if people want to plant trees, they, they're more than welcome to. I think it's a good idea. But more importantly, I think there's a, you know, there's a formalized market and a formalized way to do it. And, and we believe that it has much greater impact. Not only is it the fact that you're channeled into a, into a good project, but those projects have gone through third party independent verification to determine that you know, what kind of positive impact um, is really happening, as opposed to me setting up a project and saying, hey, this is a good idea. Give me money. So we don't support those. We only support those that have been through a third party verified verified process. Okay, excellent. So a, a really good resource um, to use if that's something you're interested in in doing, yeah. offsetting your carbon. Excellent. Uh, and so kind of getting back to the idea of what a sustainable trip looks like, um, I'm curious to hear what kinds of trips you've taken um, that, you know, through the, the whole experience, you, you really felt that um, you were having a positive impact on, on the environment, on the community, and, uh, and you, felt, you felt good about the places you were traveling to, the activities you were doing. Um, if we could hear an example or two. Yeah, um, I, uh, it's hard to answer. You know, the, I've been asked the question over the years of where's the best place I've traveled. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think my answer to this is somewhat similar, which is it's, it's not always so easy to say, and it's a bit like where's the best meal. Right? Sometimes you know the place that has the best dessert, which isn't the best main course or doesn't have the best cocktail, whatever it might be. And I think that there's a lot of it. So part of it is that you're looking for characteristics and part of it is that people haven't necessarily mastered it. And, and part of it is the, you know, the perfect perfection is elusive. Mm -hmm. um, many years ago, I, I, uh, and I used to do this for work, I traveled um, to an area in Peru and it's called Tambo Pata. And that's one of my favorite locations and, and just the, the whole experience from top to bottom. And, and, uh, traveled to the area, uh, you fly to Puerto Maldonado and you travel upriver and it's called this is in Madre de Dios, Peru. So Tambo Pata is the, uh, is, is the you know, more known name. Um, and what I can tell you is that, you know, the, the trip from soup to nuts, so to speak, was uh, incorporated low environment, low environmental impact seemed reasonable. They were using, you know, you had dug out, uh, motorized dug out canoes to get up river. Um, and so there's, you know, there's only so much you can do in that case, but, mm -hmm. um, staying in a lodge built out of local materials built by and by locals, lodges that are partially owned by locals or owned and staffed by locals, um, doing activities that are fully engaged with the environment. So whether you're wildlife viewing, um, uh, volunteering in a community or helping on a community project, um, 
uh, eating local food uh, that isn't brought in from outside, you know, thereby keeping a certain amount of carbon footprint down, keeping the use of fuels down, keeping the risks of biohazards down, because the more you bring in from the outside, the potential you are for introducing different um, uh, different biohazards into an area. And so, I, you know, this is a this is a trip I did with a company called Rainforest Expeditions. I used to you know work side by side with them when I was with a different organization, and they've um, you know they've really in many respects led the way certainly in that region for how you how you incorporate the science and how you incorporate the social into the the tourism experience and so the not only are there staff uh local who will biology masters and phd and bachelor students um so not only are they guiding but they're doing their scientific research and not only are they doing the scientific research but they're partnering up with local communities on training on ownership on building capacity on things like that and so mm-hmm. It shouldn't be terribly surprising that a lot of these things are just about how do I not operate in a vacuum? And, uh, you know, that's I think that, you know, I've seen other examples, certainly other examples in Africa and other places where, again, it's it's the shared ownership, shared responsibility with with local communities. It's not us and them. It's all us um, where you are advised along the way to you know reduce your ways, to manage your ways, to keep things controlled, to fit in to the local social dynamics to fit into the local environmental uh, issues. You know, they, you know, I mean, I think uh, some, some real experiences along the way, and I think the, 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 the best approach is to be asking questions right from the outset of what's, you know, do, I'm going to take a trip. Is there, are there environmental concerns? Are there sensitivities? Mm-hmm. What kind of engagement are there with locals? Is there, um, you know, are, how, how, what kind of support is it delivering? Is any of the money staying locally? And, um, and then you get to test it when you take the trip. Say, so does this, you know, does this pass the smell test? Hmm. Nice. Uh, so, do you suggest um, when when travelers start asking these questions ahead of time, um, should they be sending an email to the lodges or calling the lodges? Or, um, I mean, what kinds of resources have been really helpful for getting some of that preliminary information uh, found out? Yeah, I mean, the easiest. Uh, look, uh, again, I'll go back to the smell test, which is. Um, Every every traveler has more than the right, I would say, the responsibility to ask these questions. Firstly, and to you, whether you're, whether you're arranging a trip through a tour operator or a travel agent or on your own and going direct and 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 and, and visiting a lodge or whatever it might be, going to a national park. Right? These are the, ask the questions. They can ask whomever you want to start with, and then decide on the answers. Right? You'll you'll tell if the answers are are uh, are legitimate. Right. You'll be able to tell if, yes, we have an, if someone, if you're asking if do you have a policy around wildlife engagement, they come back and say, we have recycling bins in every room. That's, you know, that ought to be a sign to you that uh, they don't know the answer. If they come back and say, you know, we do have a recycling policy or a waste management policy at our property, um, but we're going to have to get you some more information on wildlife. Well, I think that's a fair and legitimate answer, but I, you, you really just pay attention. Like these are, you know, most, most, most tour operators, most lodges, particularly in, in environmentally sensitive areas, they should know these issues. How well they answer to you should be the the you know the signal of is this the kind of um, is this the kind of experience I'm looking for, or are they not in tune with what I want? So STI recently started a new project called the Travel Better Club, um, and as far as I understand, it really kind of helps travelers. Um, ask these questions and make better decisions and, and have a, a wholesome, um, less impactful experience. Uh, I wonder if you could kind of tell us more about that and where it's headed. Yeah, sure. I, there's something, you know, you just said there at the end, which is, it's really interesting. You said less impactful, which is true. Um, I think before before diving entirely into this, into this travel better, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about that, I think consumer travelers are by and large looking for more than just le- less impact. Um, I mean, we want them to be that way. I think we all we all understand why. But there's, I think there's two things happening at once. One is this continual of like, well, you know, yes, less impact is a good thing. The other is the same kind of dynamic that's happening, that we've seen happening over the last, let's say, five or eight years in the, for example, in the U.S., which is if you go to a restaurant and it says local, right, where is that beef from or these peas are from or that vegetable or the drink, it's assigned to a local farm or a local ranch or a local local producer. And I think that's the other piece of what, what travelers are looking for right now is not only the environmental, you know, the well-managed environmental or sustainable trip, but at the same time is what's, 
how do I get closer to the reality, right? The local experience. I don't want to watch things. I want to be part of things. And uh, that's, the, that's the other piece of it. So when it comes to travel better, because travel better is not just a, an environmental question. The travel better is uh, club and community was intended to do a couple things. One is it's intended to um, capture the fact that consumers or travelers are looking for more. And I think you can, you know, we can all relate to the fact that you work hard, you, um, you know, you're, you're 52 weeks during the year, you, you, you probably are not traveling nearly as much as you'd like. So when you think about what's fun or what's positive experience when it comes to travel and tourism, it's the, it's the planning, it's the taking the trip and it's the sharing afterwards. And that's, that doesn't, sadly for most of us, that doesn't occupy 52 weeks a year. So part of this is just how do you at a, at a, at a, at a pleasure and an, an engagement level broaden the experience to, to more, more time, right? If presumably if you're exchanging and thinking about trips or thinking about experiences on a more frequent basis, that's a positive. Um, at the same time, the, the other component was of, of why travel better was to say, look, Travelers clearly have a voice and a say in in changing the future. We've historically done a lot of work with governments and with uh, with businesses because, you know, as we said before, if a government says no more plastic water bottles, you can spread that decision widely. Um, same with the business. If they say from here forward, we're only using electric vehicles, for example, and that's that impact is, is broad. But we've done that and we continue to do that. We just felt it was time to start trying to engage consumers in the equation. Why? Because you take your typical large airline or large company CEO, and if they get three or five emails from customers saying, why do you do this? Or really, we want you to stop doing it. Believe me, they listen. They listen quickly. And so the ability to, to harness the consumer's voice in trying to be part of this mission was the other driver behind Travel Better. And so it's, it's, it's not intended to be preachy. It's really intended to say, how do you create a better experience? And then how do you use that consumer voice to kind of change the pathway that we've all been on? Okay. That was why Travel Better was created. Wow. Very cool. Um, so the way that it's set up, um, there's, uh, there's what, I think a 30 minute class um, that you can listen to, you can take, and then um, you pay a fee. And then you're part of this amazing, amazing community in this club. Um, what kinds of resources are available uh, if people are interested in learning more or if they're interested in possibly giving their opinion or giving their story or uh, contributing to the community? Um, how, is, how is a better travel club set up for, for that yeah. kind of? Yeah, well, I mean, to start with, one is you, um, uh, the, yeah, we designed a 30 minute online course to be educational, right? We, we know the, we think about a lot of these issues every day and, and uh, wanted to make sure that that I mean, it's not it's not a course and you're, you know, you're handing in a term paper and you suffer through it. It's it's intended to educate you and make you, in effect, a better traveler, smarter traveler. And so there's there's a whole set of, uh, of, of topics in there that some of which you'll be aware of as a traveler and some of which you might not have how to choose. What are the issues that might be involved? It's not a yes or no, right? There's no real, there's no right or wrong. It's just understanding inherent trade-offs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, that's part of the the community, the club. And at the same time, it's again, it's as I said before, it's intended to be uh, consumers not only ultimately having the opportunity to express a voice, but but you know more sort of near term. Um, meeting folks, like-minded folks, sharing and learning experiences, and so it's very much an active online community. Hi, I'm looking. You know, I went on a trip last year with this company. I see that they're not, you know, they don't really do any trips in Southeast Asia. These are the things I'm looking for. Does anybody have any ideas? You know, any thoughts on on who does a great job when it comes to, you know, when it comes to kind of, uh, seeing wildlife, when it comes to um, seeing local businesses, supporting women's groups, um, planning great surfing, whatever it might be. Those are those are topics that you see people sharing on and exchanging on all the time. It's the opportunity for consumers to do it. Businesses get on there because we want. We want people to be experts. We're not experts in everything. So if you are a dive company, right, and you know, and you've got some, you know, some new kind of program that we think is relevant, not for the come buy this, but really for, you know, we, we've just discovered a new species in this area. This is really exciting. You know, these are the kinds of trips that are out there. If anybody's really interested in diving or wants to have a discussion about it, we're happy to have that. And so there's a lot of, <laughs> it's not the, the, the sales forum as much as it is the, the opportunity to kind of learn and exchange. And, you know, the key component is building the community. 
right? Um, you, you know, you're not there watching, you're there exchanging. And I think that's, that's sort of, that's somewhat indicative of the kinds of travel that people are looking for as well. So just, I don't want to go and watch and look at stuff. I want to, you know, I want to get deeper into what's going on. And the same with Travel Better, which is I come to share, I'm, I'm on the, in that community to share my experiences and to learn, right? Maybe to meet some like-minded travelers, maybe to learn about some like-minded companies, maybe to learn, hear of some articles that on uh, the new declar the declaration, this is a number of uh, months back by the government of Ecuador, that they've expanded protections in the Galapagos such that um, uh, half of you know, Darwin and Wolf Islands are now uh, part of a, a national sanctuary, and there's only there's no more fishing allowed there. That's bad for the fishermen, but it's good for tourists, and it's good for the sharks. So what are the issues behind there? I didn't know that. I've thought about going to the Galapagos. Is that a hot issue for me? Is it not? Has anybody got the experience? Who's been to the Galapagos? What's is it is it great like people say? Are there any things I should be aware of? I'd like to learn. I'd like to find out how I can meet some locals there. Is there anything anything any special food I should uh, try? Any things I should avoid? So it's it's really is extended, uh, designed to be that kind of community exchange that that people are yeah patient people that are passionate about the topic get to meet others that are passionate about the topic get to learn more get to share more. Wow, that sounds like a really great resource. Um, and, it, and I'm sure it's going to grow and continue and, and become even more of a robust um, platform. Uh, I'm curious to see what plans STI has for the future. I mean, are any upcoming projects or um, things that you are continuing to build on? Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of the above. I think... Um, our focus these days is more and more on the Americas region. So we're very active, for example, in in, um, in two programs, one called the Sustainable Destinations Alliance for the Americas. It's kind of a program across Central America and Caribbean. And trying to not work with one destination, trying to work with 30 destinations to kind of up their game, so to speak. And that's a, that's a general statement. Um, uh, but up their game when it comes to thinking and planning and engaging and identifying the priorities and, and how tourism help is helping, how tourism isn't helping. And, and that's both environmental and social issues. We're, um, we're very active in something called the Mesoamerican Reef Tourism Initiative, um, which is focused on, on the Mesoamerican Reef. That's the second longest tourism, sorry, second longest um, uh, reef system in the globe after this Great Barrier Reef, and it's under threat by tourism. Is it to Cancun or Tulum or Riviera Maya and Playa del Carmen? People are going there and snorkeling and diving, and yet that reef isn't well protected. It's not well protected because such there's been such growth in tourism um, that you have hotels in particular, but a lot of uh, water and waste and other effluents that are making it into the water, uh, make it into the you know into the sea that obviously have a significant impact on on reef health. And so um, those are two big big programs for us. Um, I think the other thing that's quite, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if that's an intended path, but it's what we're seeing now. And maybe this is just a bit of a trend is we, we are seeing a lot of people doing a lot of asking about carbon offsets. And I tend to think it's a response to the, to the covert uh, U.S. administration, um, essentially gutting environmental policies. And, and we see individuals and in particular, we see businesses saying, what can I do? I need to do something because the government isn't. Um, and so we're seeing actually a lot of response backlash. That's I'm glad we're seeing it. I wish we didn't have to see it, but I'm glad we're seeing it. That companies are saying, "Well, we need to we need to start doing something more and be part of the solution." So, I would say that. And as far as sort of future direction for us, I think you're going to see STI investing more. Uh, in fact, I know you're going to see STI mm -hmm. investing more time and energy and focus not only in the question of travel and tourism, but really in the question of economic drivers. And so. Um, uh, you know, what what on in a local context? What is it that causes, or what is it that leads to, or allows uh, environmental uh, degradation? Typically, it's because locals are not empowered; they don't have enough they're earning of money, enough resources, um, so they don't they're not able to necessarily manage their manage the environment as well as they'd like. And so, I think you're going to see an expansion of us from you know things into into broader enterprise issues um, that may have a clear association with tourism. So that can be small enterprises, supporting women's groups, supporting collectives, um, making sure that other associated businesses or other associated revenue streams are also um, kind of fitting into this larger picture because we believe that locals are the stewardships of their land, uh, stewards of their land. And if they're, if they're in a better circumstance, a better situation, we'll have better outcomes. Wonderful. 
Uh, yes, I, I agree with that. And uh, earlier, um, we uh, so we've been screening a documentary called "The Two Point Five Percent Osa Peninsula." It was created by um, Eitan <clears throat> Elterman and um, Marco Bollinger. And uh, they went into the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica and uh, really talked to the locals there and um, found that many of them are trying to create a sustainable travel, um, <clears throat> uh, a, you know, a, a method for them to make money through sustainable travel and also keep their culture intact, keep their environment intact. And, uh, you know, many of the community members um, were a part of gold mining. They were miners who would, you know, mine gold and, and precious metals and then sell those and that's how they made their living. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the government came in and they, you know, wanted to protect this beautiful uh, wildlife. <clears throat> and so they created a, a huge park. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and many of the gold mines that the locals mined were in this park and it became illegal for them to do so. And so, um, you know, a lot of, you know, political, economic issues uh, were going down here and tourism wound up being the answer uh, for, uh, for a lot of individuals. And a lot of them are still trying to figure out how best to maneuver in this, in this new industry. But um, it's interesting to, to see case studies like that and to see um, what, you know, what tourism is really <laughs> playing a part. Yeah, I've, uh, I've spent time, I was in, I was in um, the Osa um, a number of months back. The, um, you know, Costa Rica is an interesting scenario in general. It's got obviously the reputation as being ecotourism center of the world, and and they do a lot of great things. The Osa is one of the last, you know, the one of the last vestiges of, of um, not the, but one of the last vestiges of kind of untrampled area. It's still, it's still kind of off the beaten path. That's changing. Uh, I saw a large cruise ship. Uh, like I'm working its way through the Gulf. I know that there was a large, uh, an international hotel chain has a concession, has secured a concession to build a property or, or renovate a property in that area. Um, and you're right, the you know the, the area in terms of locals is historically people in, in certain areas gold mining and, and poaching, which is which is super typical when it comes to in and around protected areas. The um, Tourism, there is tourism is successful, uh, ecotourism, sustainable tourism is successful in the area. Um, uh, and they're working down really great paths. It's, there's a lot more work to be done because Corcovado National Park is, uh, there's a lot of illegal, gold, there's legal, illegal mining going on right. straight away. And there's poaching going on. So it's, um, it's directionally really interesting. Uh, I'd say there's two different dynamics. One is how do you continue to, to uh, create opportunities, really sort of environmentally friendly and, and financially viable opportunities for locals to kind of leave one set of practices and move to another. Um, and at the same time, how do you not drive so much activity that um, that you turn it into a Disneyland, right? I think that's the you know those are the, the pressures from the from the two sides. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's a lot to consider when when trying to pick a destination to travel to. Um, uh, you know, does, does a lodge overbook, do they have too many individuals who are, you know, utilizing those resources beyond, uh, what can be sustained? Um, and there's, there's so many things to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that's, that's why I really, I really like this Travel Better Club and Sustainable Travel International, um, because you provide a lot of those, those bullet points of <laughs> things to, to look for. Well, that's what we try. There's one thing I want to mention, which is that Travel Better, you, you mentioned before, and I didn't it sort of slip right by. Uh, there, for consumers, there's no fee to join Travel Better. Like, we, we're mm -hmm. a nonprofit. We're trying to build a community. So we want we want people to get in and, and have a good time with it and, okay. and build up the experience. So I just wanted to note that. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, well, I know we, we covered a lot of ground, um, but if there's anything else that you would like to share with viewers, um, any other tips or tricks, advice, uh, with traveling? Uh, I think, you know, we, we, just, we overthink it a lot of times. Um, there's some, you know, the, the basic rules of thumb apply or should apply, which is, uh, you know, do I need that? Why am, why am I using a plastic water bottle? What's happening to the waste? Um, shouldn't part of the experience being understanding and, and engaging with locals and what is, you know, what's, what's their reality is, is, is my effort or is my business helpful? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to have a good experience when I travel. 
am I leaving this place in the same or better condition kind of environmentally and socially? And so it's not, I don't think, it, I don't think it's all so complicated. I think it's just a matter of being, knowing that it's okay to ask the question um, or the questions, where is this from? Who works there? Do you have plans? How can I help? Wonderful. So excellent questions to, to start with and to keep the conversation going. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for being here today. And um, I just really appreciated hear hearing all your answers and learning more about STI and the Travel Better Club. And I'm excited to see what happens next. Great. Happy to help. Thanks, everybody.